Hello everyone, my name is Oluwa Shin Oyekola from Cape Peninsula University of Technology, Cape Town, South Africa. I'll be presenting a study titled Anaerobic Co-Digestion of Environmental Recalcitrant Aperture and Winery Solid Waste. Massive amounts of aperture and winery waste are produced on a yearly basis. Based on the fact that these wastes are difficult to degrade, they can cause environmental nuisance if not properly managed. However, considering their physical chemical characteristics such as high lipid concentration, high moisture content, the organic content, these wastes have potential to be used as substrates for anaerobic digestion for biogas production. The current study was aimed at harnessing the potential opportunity of valorizing aperture and winery waste for the generation of biogas and concurrently addressing the pollution problem. In order to achieve this, the waste were characterized to assess their strength and deficiency and examine the need for co-digestion by mixing the substrates in different proportions. In order to achieve these objectives, standard analytical procedures were adopted. The analytical methods employed for the physical chemical characterization of substrates included total solids, volatile solids, total carbon ETC. The ultimate analysis were also conducted. Biomid, the aperture waste was separated into solid waste, noted here as AS, and liquid waste, or the cow blood, noted here as CB, while solid winery waste, otherwise called pumice, was used. The biomethane potential was measured and the substrates were digested singly and also co-digested in different proportions. These digestions were carried out in different reactors, smaller reactors, one liter reactors, which are later upgraded to five liter reactors as shown in figure 1b. Results and discussion. The total solid was shown to be highest for the winery waste and the lowest for the cow blood. The same trend was observed for the carbon nitrogen ratio. While for the TMP, the theoretical methane potential, the solid aperture waste was shown to have the highest value. The composition variability of the different substrates indicates the potential for anaerobic digestion and consequent inhibition. The carbon-nitrogen ratio of the winery waste was the highest as compared to the other waste, 28.63. For the aperture solid waste, 18.41 was recorded for the carbon nitrogen ratio, while the poorest one was the cow blood. The carbon ratio for the winery waste was the only one within the recommended range, that is 20 to 30, which is required for a stable anaerobic digestion. Substrate AS, that is the solid aperture waste, had the highest theoretical methane potential at 816.27 milliliter per gram of the volatile solids, while lower about 50% of this value were observed for the winery solid and the cow blood. Apart from the VS content and the CN, C to N ratio, a balanced macro and 
micronutrients. Concentration of the substrate also play critical role in the biotic environment and for stable anaerobic digestion performance. As shown in figure 2 above, the monodigestion of CB, figure 2b, started producing biogas from day 1 and proceeded exponentially towards day 15 towards day 15 then remained constantly from day 21 after which a second exponential phase was noted towards the last day a similar trend was noted for the combined the treated combined substrate in figure 2a the absence of lag phase in both the treated combined substrate that is as CBWS waste, the one that was treated, and the CB in figure 2B can the absence of lag phase in these two assays can be attributed to high concentration of proteins supplied by the cow blood substrate and the addition of microwave pretreated aperture solid waste, which are I in soluble fats and lipids and also the presence of the winery solid waste. This must have resulted in preferential biodegradation during the cold digestion process which resulted as well in a more stable anaerobic digestion transformation. Our, on the other hand, as shown in figure 2a, the untreated combined substrates had a long lag phase of up to two weeks, with significant inhibition noted from day 15 to day 21. This was determined to be around 43%. The inhibition was determined to be around 43% of the total biogas produced, and this lasted until day 28 as the system started to recover. It is also shown here that what was observed for the untreated combined substrate was comparable to the control reactor. In the control reactor, water and inoculum were added. There was delayed methane production for mono anaerobic digestion of the solid aperture waste and that of the winery effluent. This was associated with the production of long chain fatty acids which are known to result in reduction of methanogenic activity. The above results show possible inhibition in monodigestion of this waste and the need for both pretreatment and co-digestion to combat this deterrence. Further op optimization by considering other factors such as the food to microbe ratio, substrate mixing ratio, and organic loading show that as high as 546 as high as 546 ml ml of methane is obtainable as compared to 236 that was obtainable in the previous mono digestion that was shown in uh, figure 2 the fact that all the factors need to be considered and optimized are discussed in an article published by the authors of the current study, which is reported elsewhere. The results showing the impact of these other factors are shown in figure 3, 4, and 5. What can be noted in figures 3, 4, and 5 is that as the organic load decreases 
from as the organic load decreases, the methane production increases. The effect of the full two microbe ratio and organic load loading rate are reported in details in a paper recently published this year. The details of the paper is provided here. In conclusion, winery and abature waste can be managed through co-digestion to concurrently address pollution and provide solution for energy crisis. However, different factors need to be carefully investigated and optimized in order to harness the potential opportunity in this waste. We would like to appreciate the National Research Foundation, NRF of South Africa, for funding this project. We would also like to appreciate every other person that contributed to the success of this study. These are some of the references cited in the current study. Questions will be addressed afterwards. Thank you. Thanks for your attention.